How's it going guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, I'm gonna be going through my settings. In every single video I post, I get a dozen comments. Dice, what's your settings? Settings video? What camera settings do you have? What's your dead zone? What's your sensitivity? There's a million settings questions. So this is gonna be the ultimate settings guide video on how I play the way I do and how I got 1400 early season, which is insanely hard, and how I'm GC2 Division Three early season which isn't that impressive, but yeah. So let's just get straight into it. So the first thing is training. A lot of people overlook this, but this standard option is actually really helpful because for there's two things, but the first thing is memorizing boost pathing, right? So like if you're playing a game, right? And someone has the ball and you're low on boost, but you want to keep ball cam on and you, if you know where all the boost paths are, you can pretty much just cycle around the boosts without having to turn off ball cam and look. I actually missed that one. Like most like lower rank players, and even some higher rank players, will have to do something like this. Like well, they'll have to like turn off ball cam and go like this, and it's somewhat dangerous. So that's the first thing, which I think is beneficial, is you can learn boost pathing. The second thing is you can learn what shots you can actually do on certain boosts. Like if you go into free play, whoops. If you go into free play with limited boosts, you're not gonna be doing shots that aren't even possible in game. So like if I'm trying to learn to air dribble, but I'm using millions and millions and millions of boost, that was a horrible air dribble, but if I'm using millions and millions of boost, it's not even gonna be possible in game. So it's a good way to practice mechanics you would like to do in ranked. And though my mechanics aren't great right now, it is what I originally started to do um, on how I learned a lot of my mechanics. Granted, most of my mechanics are all around like flicking and whatnot. But yeah, that's for the first, whoops, that's for the first tab. Um, for the second one, this is actually a pretty controversial topic, but I turn off crossplay when I'm playing 2v2. For one, because console players are worse than PC players. Sorry to all my console players out there, but it's just true. I mean, you're at a disadvantage. You only have 120 FPS max. Most only have 60. And so, like, obviously I have an advantage against console players. So when I'm playing 2v2, I turn it off. Um, because I don't want that on my team. <laughs> but if I'm duo queuing with someone, I'll turn it on. If the player is PC. And if I'm playing 1v1, I'll turn it on. Because for one, the queue times are crazy in 1v1. Like, towards the end of me getting SSL rewards this season, I was in like a 25 minute queue for like the last four or five games. So that's the main reason I have it on. And then once again, beating console players is just significantly easier than beating PC players. As good as the player is, there's input delay, there's FPS, there's, you know, pretty much everything. Um, and they don't have as much frames as I do. So yeah, it's just an advantage against them. So I will have it on for 1v1 and I do take advantage of that. <laughs> um, the next thing, camera settings. This is a huge one. I have a complete camera settings video. So I'm not going to go into crazy depth about all the camera settings and what each of them does in popular settings, but I will do a general basis here real quick. First of all, if you have Bacchus mod, you can pretty much select pro players camera settings, which is just like a cheat code. You don't have to create your own. You can just select them. I don't know how updated they are, but even if they're not updated, you could just go on Google and type in Zen camera settings and the Liquipedia page should come up and you could copy them. Um, that's one way to do it. Um, camera shake, you should have that off. Field of view, FOV, the popular range is anywhere from about 107 or 108 to 110. Um, you might ask yourself, why would anyone opt for a lower FOV? And it's so that you're closer to your car, so that when you flick, you can be more precise, basically. Because if I look, like if I actually think about it, okay, if I actually look and think about it, I can get like really good flicks um, because like I can see exactly where the ball is on my car. So it's much easier to be consistent with your flicks. It's much easier to be consistent with your power slide dribbles, you know, because you actually know what's going on. So that's why people do it. But people mainly that do this are more so ground oriented because if you have like a 110 FOV and you go in the air a lot, what can happen is, or what does happen is you're already close to the, to the car. I kind of messed up there, let me lock in. Uh, you're kind of close to the car already. So there's really no point in lowering your FOV because I'm already right next to the car. And so that's pretty much the idea there. Distance and height kind of go hand in hand. The most common camera setting you'll see is typically like two seven and 
110 maybe maybe 260 100 actually no that's not common <laughs> um 270 110 is a pretty common camera setting the reason mine looks kind of weird is because i have this angle on usually it's negative four like this this is a really common camera setting so yeah the angle basically just changes like the like if you were to move your joystick it pretty much just changes that angle like if you were to move it up and down um but yeah stiffness is basically how much your camera moves from zero velocity or zero speed to maximum velocity so you see how my camera looks now and then at full speed it's all the way out like you see how i'm all the way outside of my car right now but if i have zero speed you see how much closer i am that's what stiffness does so if you're at zero stiffness it's gonna change like the absolute most like it's the as far as out as it can be and right here it's as close as it can be and then if you're at the maximum obviously it's the opposite it's going to be the exact same throughout the entire way do you see how it doesn't change at all like it's the exact same so that's pretty much what that does <clears throat> swivel speed this is just like it just changes the speed when for when you're moving your camera around with your right joystick unfortunately keyboard players don't have this option i don't think and so like when you move around your joystick it's how fast it goes so this is just completely personal preference as well as transition speed when newer players to the game aren't going to like 1.7 because it's going to look like it's snapping or hurting your neck but it's kind of important that you get used to it because if i meant like this like this takes so long I'm, I'm legit bored just trying to wait for it to happen and so eventually you'll get to the point where you're comfortable with like 1.4 and you think like that's the max without hurting your neck or your eyes or whatever but like if you try something like this like this is going to hurt even my head like this i don't like this at all but some people do that so like i like 1.7 is the only one where there's actually like a a swap and it's not just a snap it's so like 1.7 is the highest where it's like a swap because as soon as you go to 1.8 like i just showed there's, there's no swap it's just a snap and i just don't like it so 1.7 is the perfect range for me and 1.6 is just a little too slow so 1.7 is what i like and then i've never even I don't even know what this means, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's the same thing as a transition speed. You wouldn't want a hard cut, but I feel like you'd want it pretty close to it. So, yeah. Now, this is a big one, controls. This is completely up to personal preference, 100%. So, for me, because I use the PS5 controller, I can get away with a lower dead zone. So, for me, if I have this on straight zero, let me go to a straight line so I can kind of show you guys. I could get away with doing this on straight zero. Ideally, you want your dead zone as low as you can possibly be without drifting to the side like this. So if you notice you're doing this movement right here and drifting to the side, then it's too low and you have a little bit of stick drift. So you just keep going up one until you can do it without moving. So if you're doing this, like if you're moving a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, which I'm doing manually, by the way, just to simulate it, you keep going up one. And so, yeah, the reason I have it on 0.5 is because sometimes I can get sick drift like randomly. And so like, it's just kind of like a safety precaution, but I, c I used to have it on a straight zero, but I like to have it on 0.5 just out of like safety. And then dead zone is how much you need to move your stick to pretty much flip. So like if I'm going for a fast aerial, I should probably turn on my controller cam, but if I'm going for a fast aerial. Let me turn it on real quick. Okay. So if I'm going for a fast aerial, you'll notice that for me to actually flip like backwards, I'm holding it like this far back. So like if I do something like this, it's not gonna flip, I'm barely touching it. But if I do something like this, it's gonna backflip. So it just determines how sensitive your stick is. Like if I do something like this, any movement is gonna backflip me. Like any touch on the joystick at all is gonna backflip me. So 40 for me, is a good range, but a lot of people do 55 or 60 just out of safety. So they're not like backflipping mid game, but yeah. Um, interface, that's preference. I'm not even gonna get into that. Video, so for video settings, um, <clears throat> here's the thing. A lot of this stuff is personal preference on how you want the game to look, but if you want to have the best performance, you should have all of this on high performance or this on high performance. I thought there was a high performance for this one. I guess not. But there used to, I thought there was a high performance for this and a high performance for this. But I like to have quality on this one. 
and that's just what I like. And then here, you know, 360 FPS is just what my monitor is. Audio settings, it just depends on how loud your headset is, but I'm not great with audio and then chat. I don't have voice chat on, and that's pretty much my settings. Um, a few common questions I get with my settings is how often do I change my settings? And it's somewhat of a valid question because you'll notice that pro players a lot of the time will be like, oh, well, I don't like this. I'm changing this to 110 and 270. Like, you can do that. But, like, I feel like for me, it's kind of like a mental thing. Like, it's kind of... I'm trying to think of the word. It's a... Uh, placebo effect like changing your camera settings is make you, is going to make you play better kind of like changing your car is going to make you play better like changing your car design is going to affect the way you play which if that works for you so be it but for me that doesn't do anything right so like i've always had like the same car you can go back to my like one of my oldest videos on the page like maybe two or three years ago i'm still using the same car the same design same settings Maybe not the same settings, but like, it's just something you you like learn. Like you realize, oh, I like this, so I'll do it this way. Like recently, I've put L3 on my arrow left so I can Mac to free set, which I don't even do all that often, but yeah. That's pretty much the tutorial though. Um, another common question I get is, how do I know what steering sensitivity and what aerial sensitivity I like? Well, sensitivity in, in any game it's just personal preference. And so the way I like to do it is the way I like to figure it out is I'll put it something like crazy high, right? So I'm only going to do steering just because I'm not going to change them both. But if I put this on like five, right? So we're on five and I'm steering. Like I can't control this. Like this is way too fast. Like when I'm doing this movement, I mean, I guess I could technically do it, but like it's so fast. I can, I don't really like it this quick. So then if you put it on something extremely low, like one, <clears throat> when I try to do the steering, like I can't really get back to where I want in time and I can't do the dribbles that I like to be able to do. So then you kind of go in the middle of that and then you're like, okay, let me try 2.5 because that's in the middle of five. 2.5 is half a five. And for me, this is still too quick. Like I can't control what I'm doing. So then you're like, we'll go even lower. So eventually you get to the point where you just find out what you like. And for me, I found out that I like 1.65 the best, but occasionally I will raise it. But yeah, that's pretty much like how you figure out what you what you want to do for your settings. You, it just takes practice. Like you look at the settings and you're like, oh, I like that. And then you stick to it. It's the same thing with pretty much anything in life at all. If you like something, you stick to it. If you like a job, you work there, you know? So if you like a sport, you play it. That's just how I went about getting my best settings. And I've played other games too, like Valorant. A lot of pro players and a lot of games, they just have their own settings and everyone has their own unique settings. So I wouldn't advise anyone to just copy my settings like exactly because it's just what I like and it's probably not what you like because I'm a very ground-based player despite me doing this stuff. And the reason I'm like going in there all the time is because I'm like, kind of bored of just playing on the ground right now because like I was that's all I was doing in ranked is just practicing like stuff like this and just like dribbling and it was just boring so that's why I'm going in the air so much right now um, just because I'm trying to get back on the air mechanic grind but yeah that's pretty much this video I hope you guys found this video at least somewhat helpful if you did make sure to like and subscribe and comment what kind of video you guys want to see remember I'll have my camera settings video in the description as well so you can get a really in-depth of just camera settings and how that all works and coincides with each other see you on the next one peace